to see everyone today. I hope you enjoyed Thanksgiving. And I uh, hope it was blessed and you enjoyed some quality time with your family, friends, and loved ones. Uh, tremendous task in front of us th this week in Southern. Played them once, and uh, we won handily. But that does not mean anything. This is playoffs, and anything can happen. But we just want to happen what happened previously. So that's the way we're going at it. We received some wonderful news of several of our players uh, for the all SWAC team. Um, Aubrey Miller, first team defense. Cam uh, Simon Craig, first team defense. Now it's Gaddy, first team defense, first team offense. Um, Dallas Daniels, Tyler Brown, um, Savion Wilkerson, and Shador Sanders. Um, all first team, second teams as well. We had a few, few players on second team. Uh, Alejandro Mata, I don't know how he's on second team of anything. He don't miss. Um, Isaiah Bolden, Justin Reagan, and offensively, DJ Stevens, uh, Shane Hooks as well. So God bless the coaching staff and what they brought to the table to ensure that our players were who they were, as well as Defensive Player of the Year, Aubrey Miller, Offensive Player of the Year, Shador Sanders, Freshman of the Year, Kevin Coleman. Um, this excludes Travis, of course, because he wasn't eligible for any postseason awards for the SWAC because of the limit of game that he participated in. Let's go. And he was named Coach of the Year. Uh, don't worry about me. I'm good. No, team success is, is opposite. Team success leads to individual success. Yeah. So when you see all the names there, obviously it's no, no surprise, but it's further confirmation of everything you guys are doing. What do you think, or what do you see that does maybe for them personally to kind of get a, lo a little taste? Of it enhances the their belief that what we've been teaching. Uh, when you work together and you win, a lot of people get recognized. It's no stranger that uh, most participants in the Pro Bowls stem from teams that have winning records. Normally those Super Bowl type teams normally have the most people participating in Pro Bowls and uh, postseason achievement and awards. So this just uh, constitutes and validates what we've been teaching. When you talk about being identical teams, you know, what was it like for yourselves looking at or what do you talk to, talk to your players about seeing things from this year on and seeing it happen after the year? Um, they're excited. We don't talk about that kind of stuff, man. They're all home. First of all, they're excited to see that that happens. Uh, our players think bigger. They don't think just getting in the game, your first game of Thanksgiving. They think we're going to go there and start. We're going to be drafted. We're going to dominate. I mean, that's the way they think. We're happy for uh, James Houston, but they think a little different. Great question, making uh, sure our young men, as well as coaches, as well as training staff, uh, equipment staff, and everyone in-house remains focused on the main thing. The main thing is dominating for 60 minutes on Saturday. That's the thing. Don't start thinking about the Celebration Bowl. Don't start thinking about these achievement and postseason awards. Focus on the job at hand. That's the main thing. And we got to keep the main thing the main thing. Great question. Like you said, nothing before this game matters as far as the competition. True. And obviously, you know, we know it was 35 nothing. We know it was homecoming. We know everything that happened against Southern this season. But um, how do you get those guys in that same mindset of just forget everything, stay clean piece of paper when we're going we, to We don't want them to forget everything. That's, that's a lie. We want them to remember that whooping. We want them to remember um, how they perform. We, we want them to remember that. But we also, we also want them to uh, perfect what we did last time when we played against these uh, against this team. We don't want them to forget everything. We want them to understand the feeling of, of walking on and off that field in dominance. So they, we don't want them to forget everything. We don't want them to recall uh, that 60 minutes of whooping that we that we handed up. I remember you said after that game that the defense is kind of the, the life of that game. Uh, the the defense is always the life of that game. You notice we always put the defense up first. When, when given the opportunity, we put the defense up first because they're – they are a backbone. They're everything to this team. So, what do you think it was, just thinking back to that Southern game, uh, that you learned from?
from uh, for your offense to maybe improve upon again from this time? Off, uh, offense has got to be consistent. We ran the heck out of the ball, and uh, they're vulnerable to that as well. So we got to be consistent and physical and run the heck out of the football. Usually when – Ever we're tremendously balanced, we're really effective. But it does not take balance to get a victory. We could throw for 500 yards and run for 100. I'm good with that. We could rush for 500 yards and, and throw for 100. I'm good with that. We just want the victory. It wasn't that long ago we played them. Um, <coughs> they played some quality schools. They're a quality football team. They're well coached. The discipline. I can't say it's a distinct difference because they're doing the same things they did on film. They're running the same plays. They're running the same uh, defenses. Um, they're doing some of the same things. Patience. Patience to set things up. Patience to understand the flow of the game not to force it, allow it to happen. I think we've seen that. Because it's easy to, when you start out like you start out and a lot of people don't know the way you call a game, then when they start collecting film on you and they start preparing for you and some things they're able to stop, to shift and navigate, not just keep forcing stuff. And the uh, Bible says kicking against, against pricks. Just he, he doesn't keep trying to force it now. He uh, takes his time and definitively takes what they give him. And I'm proud of him for that. How has the team handled the last 48 to 72 hours and the conversation that you and Aura came in the locker room and called My team don't give a damn about that. Y'all care about that. My team care about what we tell them and how we work. Y'all act like these kids are crazy. Like these kids, you know darn well when you win, this kind of stuff happened. Everyone wants a piece of you. Everyone's calling you this and calling you that. That's part of the, that's part of life, and I, I love that part of life um, for for them and for the coaches. So they don't, they don't think like y'all think. You, know, you guys sensationalize some stuff and just want to get a story instead of asking me the right darn question so I can give you the truth of the matter. Is I think that's what happened yesterday. The gentleman asked me a question. I told him the truth. He's so used to being lied to. When I told him the truth, he didn't understand the follow up question. Right. He didn't have a follow-up question for it. So <laughs> you guys sensationalize everything instead of asking the, the right questions. There's some good questions still out there that you, you should ask, but I can't lead you down that street. Coach, you always talk about the defensive line always getting the most ball. You've got to provide the speed on the mm -hmm. Forget my legacy. How does it fit in the overall scheme of what we're trying to accomplish in life? Not only for me, but for the coaches, for these young men. Some of these men, we've already took a, a panel, have never won a championship in nothing. Pee Wee League all the way up. Checkers, everything you can think of. Monopoly, anything. Um, the little slap game, they ain't won that. And now they're getting the opportunity to, to not only win, but the understanding the art and the philosophy and what it takes to be a winner. That's teaching these guys far more lessons of life than lessons of this game because that's what we're trying to raise and we're trying to birth winners in their understanding how to do so. So it's so much bigger than the game of football that we're trying to teach here at Jackson State. Dominate their moment? You got to prepare for that. It, it does not just happen in that moment. That That is prepared for a way when no one is looking in the summer, in the weight room, on, on the football field, on the turf, uh, at home. Um, when, when there's no one there to Instagram you or to post it for you, that stuff is done in the film room or in the confines of your crib when you're just watching huddle or whatever mechanism you use to study over and over and over and over till it becomes a habit. That's where that happens, not in front of thousands. It happens on the, in the dark when no one's looking and no one's clapping and no one's calling your name. Coach, got a, a follow-up question for you. Gotcha. Uh, the comment was supposed to be given out this evening. Since 1996, no swag player, HBCU player in the state has won an Ole Miss's two 
being this is church now and being dominated by him. Lord Jesus. Yeah. What does it mean to you as a father not only to coach him but to, to do it with the award tonight that you serve for us? Um, I don't think it means a lot to me as a father. Um, I'm proud of him. I, I really am. But first of all, I know Shador like a book. He's not going to want to say nothing after if, if he is to win it, not going to want to articulate himself. Um, he does not want any media because of it. He, he wants to focus on this Saturday. That's where he is right now because he understands when he goes, we really go. So that's how simplistic it is for him as a, as a player. So he's, he's going to shy away from the light. But uh, I'm, I'm proud as a father, tremendously. I'm proud as a father. But I'm more proud of, of these achievements that a multitude of our kids have earned. Uh, I'm proud of that. I'm really proud of that. Coach, there was a big update in the uh, Black Press Conference mm -hmm. um, about the Colorado offer and, yes, sir. and everything. Uh, the one follow-up question that I would have asked that I don't think was, was uh, would you like to return as the Jacksonville head coach or, or would you uh, want to take another Yeah, but see, that's a tricky question. So when I answer that question, and uh, it's, it's, I don't even want to go there because you know where that's going to start. And uh, that's a great question, though, for you. <laughs> a great question for you. I don't, I don't want to go there. I am enthusiastically happy with where I am. Truly happy. I'm proud. I'm pleased. I feel like this is the best fan base in FCS football by far. I think this is the best fan base in HBCU football that has been in quite some time. And we have work to do. We have work to do. We're not finished. Great question, though. Coach, what was the question that you asked? If I told you, it wouldn't be a question, would it? I, I, I asked it if you told me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good one. My, my final thought on the topic, I don't mean to, to push it. Cause we no, all you're not pushing it. You're good. You're, you're your friends. So. Uh, what happened? Well, I, don't, I didn't hear. What happened with it? No, it's just the you know the media coverage of you know Lane Kiffin and Auburn and all that. And what what happened? What, I don't know. I wasn't following it. What happened? Well, it, it, there's just a, you know when you're there's asking coaches there's media and everything about what they want to take because there's also a personal decision. So I understand it's a personal decision. I don't want to you know. Well, it's a lot more. It's a lot more people involved in in, yeah. in, in this than just me. Of it's, it's a coach right over there that's yeah. involved. It's a also a good young man over there that's involved. <laughs> there's a whole there's, lot of things involved. Exactly, exactly my point. So yeah. just, uh, my, my final thought on it is not to push the topic, but to ask the question is, if, if, if you were to consider other opportunities, um, would you hope that uh, Shadur would come with you to the opportunity? Or uh, <laughs> anything about it? That's a good like, one I, there. I, I gotta ask. That's I gotta a good ask, one. You know what I mean? No, I'm a, uh, that's a good one there. Think about what you just said, man. I mean, I, you, you got kids. Two sons. You have, ki you have, you have kids yet? You have kids yet? I do not. Okay. Well, when you do, you'll understand how, how, how wonderful that question was. I just, uh, I have to ask. That's yeah. the only silly question is one not asked. No, it's not a silly question. There's no such thing as a silly question. It's a dumb question, but not a silly <laughs> question. And that was neither. That, that, was, that was neither. That's a good question. I'll, I'll make it up with my other ones that are better, hopefully, all season. You, you have been good. You have been good.